world, welcome back to The Sheep in the Wall. Today I'm bringing you my wrap up for September, that means all the books that I read in the month of September, and my TBR for October, which means all the books I'm planning to read in October. The first book I read in September is An Old Woman's Reflections by Peg Sayers. I don't actually have the book because I borrowed it from Leon, whom you might know from my latest Breakfast Journal video. So this book is a collection of stories told by Peg Sayers, who uh, is an Irish woman who lived on Great Blasket Island um, off the coast of Dingle, County Kerry in Ireland for most of her life. Life on the island was pretty unique, so it was quite interesting for me to learn a little bit more about that because I am also from an island and so I just, I have a thing for island stories. However, um, even though Peg is supposed to be this amazing storyteller, I didn't understand half of what was going on in this book and the other half just didn't really interest me. Maybe it's because the stories simply don't work as well in English as they do in Gaelic or maybe it's because of the very kind of informal speech-like style in which um, the book is written but it just didn't do anything for me. I've also come to understand that this book is a bit of a, a collective trauma for a whole generation of Irish people because it's required reading in um, their secondary schools. So clearly I'm not the only one who didn't like it. Anyway, I gave it one star in the end and let's just say that I'm happy it was a short book. The second book that I finished is The Devil Wears Prada by Lauren Weisberger. I've seen the film, obviously. The first time I saw it was actually in Paris, which is funny in retrospect, but I didn't really realize at the time. Anyway, both the book and the film are about Andy who goes to work for Miranda Priestley who is the editor-in-chief of Runway Magazine, which is a fashion magazine. It's kind of a hellish job because Miranda is like one of those terrible, terrible bosses and um, Andy doesn't really have any interest in fashion um, but she knows that if she does this for a year she has a much better shot at getting a job that she actually wants which is um, to write for a magazine. Apparently the story is partially based on Weisberger's own experience um, because she worked for Anna Wintour who is the editor-in-chief of Vogue magazine. When I just started this book I was quite enjoying it but the further I got the more annoying it became. It's a lot of the same and while Miranda is much kind of meaner in the book, um, Andy is also a lot more annoying in the book. Alex, her boyfriend, is actually a lot flatter in the book than he is in the film, which was a bit disappointing. I'm thinking about doing a book to film review on this one, so I will talk more about it then. And um, I rated it two stars. Next is The Once and Future King by T.H. White. I started this book in the beginning of August during the Booktubeathon. Um, it's split up into several, I think five books, and I finished the first one and most of the second one during the Booktubeathon. The first one I liked, but the rest didn't really, you know, capture my attention, so I really had to motivate myself to keep going. Eventually, I started, you know, going back to it again, and the last week I've actually been reading quite a lot in it, and I find that it's easier to just read large chunks in longer sittings um, and that will help me stick with the story better. I haven't finished it, as you can see the bookmark is still in there, but um, I'm filming this on the 26th and it's going up on the 27th so I have a good couple of days before the end of the month and I think I might finish it. I also just wanted to include it in this video because I've spent quite a lot of time this month reading it and it just seemed weird not to mention it at all. Um, but like I said, I'm definitely going to have to reread this in the future because I feel like a lot of it is going over my head. So that was September, now let's move on to my TBR for the month of October. I went with a kind of Halloween theme for the entire month, and so I picked some books that maybe I normally wouldn't have read or wouldn't have picked up um, as quickly. I have five books planned, I don't know yet in which order I'm going to read them, so I'm just going to take you through them at random. So the first book I have is this one, Tales of Mystery and Imagination, which is a collection of what are apparently Edgar Allan Poe's best stories. I picked this book up at the Bukoferstein. If you don't know what that is, just go back to my previous video because I vlogged um, my experience there. Now, I've definitely read some of Edgar Allan Poe's stories and I've had some of them read to me, um, but I wouldn't call myself familiar with his work at all. So I'm really interested to read these stories and to see what I think of them. The beauty of short stories, and some of these are really short, is that you can just read a few, put the book down, come back to it later and read some more. So I might actually save a few of these for actual Halloween night. Next is Nightly and Sun by Rohan Gavin, which is a book that I also got at the Book of Einstein. I'm not exactly sure what it's about, but it seems to be a bit of a crossover between a Sherlock Holmes type detective story and something that's um, 
a bit more magical perhaps. It's a children's book with the protagonist being a 13 year old boy so I don't know how much I'm going to get out of this but I'm going to give it a try anyway. Next up is Great Tales of Horror which is another collection of short stories this time by H.P. Lovecraft. I think the main difference between the Edgar Allan Poe one and this one is that um, Poe's stories are creepy because of the things he emits. It has a kind of mystery, thrillery vibe um, whereas Lovecraft writes horror. Now I've never read um, real horror stories before but I have this idea in my head that it's a lot less subtle. I don't know if this is true but I'm very excited to try it out for the first time and um, see what I think. Next is The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman. I absolutely love Neil Gaiman and his way of spinning stories but I don't really seem to get around to reading much of his stuff. As some of you may know, because I've definitely talked about this before, uh, my copy of Coraline um, includes some short stories in the back, and some of these short stories are actually excerpts from the Graveyard Book. So I was already kind of familiar with what the story is about, and I know that many of my friends um, have rated this book very highly on Goodreads, so I really, really need to read it. Finally, there is The Dumb House by John Burnside. From what I understand, this book is properly created Creepy. It's about a twisted guy who locks up his own children in a basement and raises them without language. I first heard about it in a video by Claire from the Book Fox and it was recommended to her by Jen Campbell so there's been a lot of chatter about it in my corner of booktube. Even though this is one of the books that I don't think I would read normally because I don't really like to be scared, um, I decided to give it a go and I don't know, I think it might be interesting. It's definitely the language aspect that drew me to it. So that was my wrap up for September and my TBR for October. If you have any comments about any of the books that I mentioned, please feel free to leave them down below. Keep in mind that the TBR books I haven't read yet, so don't, you know, put like major spoilers in your comment, please. As you may know, I am trying to get to 1000 subscribers before the end of the year. So if you like this video, it would really mean a lot to me if you could maybe share it with your friends or something. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you again next time.